Next, we come to a story from uh, from one of our national museums, the the British Museum. Although I nearly said the Mittish Bruseum there, a wonderful Facebook group, <laughs> um, <laughs> which I've recently recently discovered. Um, but yeah, the British Museum uh, has. It, I mean, it depends on, on, on who you listen to on this, has has possibly courted controversy, uh, on the other hand, has been very receptive to the, the public tone. I mean, it, it, uh, it, in their decision to move, or as The Guardian describes here, actually remove, statue of slave-owning founder Hans Sloan. He has been pushed off the pedestal and placed with artefacts putting his work in the context of the British Empire. Uh, but for some people, this has been a travesty. This has been a, 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 a an erasure of history, and he has essentially just disappeared. He's, he's completely unfindable, although we, we have found a photo of where he is at the moment, so he's he's not invisible after all. Um, but but... <laughs> well, they, they, they published photos. There was nothing back door about this at all. It was a perfectly no. it was a, you know it was a pub. You know the, the whole story was prompted by the you know, museum of people who went there, and you know it's, there's nothing secret about it at all. No, precisely. Uh, but what 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 do you make of this? Um, uh, in particular, um, the I suppose the context of this because this this comes off the back of uh, Black Lives Matter. It comes off the back of, uh, for example, the the you know, um, uh, Colston etc. statue being pulled down, also other statues being reassessed. And um, and in this instance, this this is a figure who is, for better or worse, at the, the the founding moment of one of our national institutions, an internationally important national institution, nonetheless. Um, what, did, did, were they right to do this? Uh, is is there an argument to be said that actually this that that maybe he could, he should have been left untouched? What what do you reckon? Um, I am on the record. I think when we talked about we did our live stream about Colston and and, um, and and I have to say uh, uh, and I'll just reiterate again. I I found uh, I have to be careful how the language I use here, but. I found the, the public response to the Colston statue, first of all, in relocating it to the bottom of Bristol Harbour mm -hmm. and then recover it to, for, 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 for display in another context, in the context of the debate about uh, how we view our dark heritage, in particular the Brit Britain's involvement in the trade in enslaved people, and particularly enslaved Africans. Um, I find intellectually, I find the whole thing quite thrilling, actually, in terms of it's we're rediscovering uh, a heritage that we should have known much more about, that our colleagues knew much more about, but found themselves unable to communicate because the broad society at that point wasn't receptive in a way that it appears to be now to hearing stories about people like Sloan and Colston mm -hmm. and Thomas Guy and the the, the who were once seen as the great and the good of the Enlightenment and Enlightenment organisations like, you know, in Guy's case, it's Guy's Hospital. In Sloan's case, it's the British Museum. Mm -hmm. um, the, um, the 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 the, um, the Tate family behind the Tate Gallery, um, who, who made their money in sugar. Um, you know, the, all all of these people are coming under. The, or, the origin of their fortunes is coming under question to say, look, OK, they may have made, you've done these wonderful things like endow galleries and hospitals and museums. Mm -hmm. But in, the, in, in to use a modern term, it's dark money. Hmm. So we have to have the argument. That, you know, we don't want, we, you know, you can't unmake the British. Nobody wants to unmake the British Museum or unmake the Tate Gallery. Where well, uh, that's not true. There are, there, are, there are some people who want to. Yeah, well, they're, bar they're barking. Um, uh, the, I, I, the piece, I, I, you know, we we we're yet to have that that long threatened video about about this. Um, I, 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 you know, a live stream debate on that issue would be fascinating. I'm happy to. I, I'll yeah. be the you, MC. You, you, yeah. I'll just... <laughs> what I'm saying, what I'm saying, what I'm saying, barking. What I'm saying, what I'm saying, what I'm saying, barking. What I mean is, you, you you can't have a year zero for those museums and galleries and hospitals mm. and so on. They, they're going to they're going to continue to exist, yeah. and so they should. I would argue. Um, they ch they they change and the curatorial policies and so on and the curatorial philosophies will change, mm -hmm. but the institutions I think still have a value. Mm 
Yeah. Okay. Um, but that doesn't mean we mustn't acknowledge where they came from and where the materials came from. Well, and in that sense, another another modern phrase would be uh, seed money. So you know, good things can be done with 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 money by virtue of it being a unit of currency, but where but how that currency was was uh, was generated in the first place can often be quite far removed from its effects. Um, and in this instance, the slave the the the, the benefit no, sorry, the fruits of the slave trade uh, are what uh, Sloan um, uh, has been been connected to. Uh, and actually, in the in the uh, the the new exhibition where he is uh what what they do is they, they actually um very specifically put him uh, next to a plaque that says here legacies of empire and slavery you know that they're, 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 they're quite matter of fact about it uh they are laying out the facts as as they are and and in that sense no one can dispute those facts uh, i suppose the, the 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 question here seemingly from some um in particular on in particular online is whether or not having those facts laid out before you constitutes an unfair recon a, a recontextualization of what hitherto has been seen as uh, as something which is um a beloved element of our history this sort of this notion of 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 public one might even go so far as to say public-minded activities, uh, like, for example, building museums, hospitals, public infrastructure, okay. sewerage, uh, transportation networks in London, so on and so forth. That stuff for a long time has been fed to the British public and been presented as one of the real benefits of 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 our system of government, in fact, dare I say, whereby the people in charge were with it should be said you know, with some cajoling from the public and protests <laughs> um were convinced to in, implement this stuff for the good of of people here um you can understand why people then with that in mind react quite strongly to movement of statues and recontextualization of statues which they see as possibly trying to malign someone or trying to trying to to put their put their achievements down as it were and and also it should also be said sorry just very briefly lots of people in that nationalistic context feel that their achievements are our achievements as well they often think that actually the british museum is a wonderful british thing and i'm a british person and therefore it's wonderful you know you see what i mean there's, there's sort of a footballification you know i wear that scarf therefore nothing will be said against them if... oh yeah mm. absolutely you talk about people's reputations and there's a very and, and, and we put the link in but partly by way of balance but also partly because it, because it is a view and it is a view that needs to be taken on board and, and discussed i think but there's an article by charles moore the conservative uh, mm. writer and journalist um in the spectator um yes. about hans sloan mm -hmm. and he makes a number of very interesting points i mean i, I mean I, you know personally i disagree with the article profoundly i think what the british museum has done is entirely appropriate mm -hmm. and and, and, and bet more than appropriate, it's actually necessary because the argument has moved on from that football scarf waving, I hope. Mm. Um, or at least it is an area where I think the uh, museum community, curatorial community, heritage community like us, we can actually show some leadership to our wider communities and say, look, you know, we need to address this stuff. And this yeah. is why it's important. Well, and in that sense, but, uh, 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 to, to, to employ another modern, modern parlance, um, it's no longer excusable to be quite so tone deaf, as it were. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But what Moore says is interesting. I mean, he points out, I mean, that um, Sloan was born in 1660. He lived a very long and very active life, and a very engaged life. Mm -hmm. um, he was a fellow of the Royal Society, which is the, the peak of Britain's scientific and cultural community for 68 years. Mm. Um, and that, that's how important engagement was. He 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 um, uh, donated the Chelsea Physic Garden to the Society of Apothecaries. Mm -hmm. um, he uh, you know he, he made all these endowments to other um, places of culture and and so on. He um, supported uh, cut price drugs to poorer people through the Royal College of Physicians and things like that. Mm. But. Uh, uh, as um, uh, uh, and um, he says, uh, but then why has um, the public spirited Sloan now been put in the stocks of history by the director and trustees of a museum of which he was arguably the most generous benefactor ever? Really, because of his marriage. In other words, he blames Sloan's wife. Um, now, this is rather disingenuous because a couple of paragraphs earlier, he points out that among his government positions, 
Um, he was the governor of Jamaica. Yeah. Now, probably the Jamaica most brutal period. slave colony in human history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we can argue about that. We can look at the Belgian Congo as well. But yes, argue, well, yeah. You know, it, 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 yeah, but exactly. Jamaica in the early 18th century was not a paradise for black people. Mm. Um, and so to, to, for, 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 for Charles Moore to blame Sloane's wife and her family's connection with plantations on Jamaica is a little bit, um, it's pushing it a little bit. Yeah. Um, well, the, and this, this is where, uh, uh, this is where I'm, I'm genuinely interested and I genuinely try to keep an open mind as to this, this question of so-called cancel culture. Because an awful lot of people uh, on uh, who, who do have more conservative political views, I'm not even going to say, you know, on the far right, you know, just people who, who are culturally conservative will bemoan this as another example of so-called cancel culture. And, uh, and, and in that sense, it's probably worthwhile saying that this person hasn't been cancelled they've been recontextualized uh, and in that sense people who visit the museum have the uh have the right to see this founding father of that museum for what he was in the context of empire and slavery and also talk about about how yes you are in a building that's directly benefited from wonderful philanthropic ideals uh, ish um but also as well those that that philanthropy was made possible by slavery it, it i think it's this isn't cancelling this is recontextualization uh, and it's and it's the job of historians to do that i mean as, as I, I consistently say on this youtube channel um or, or you know on archaeo soup is um that, that, that we're interested in what's new about the past we're not we're not just there to go yes Yes, this happened. Wonderful, and nothing, nothing. There's no new information to bring to bear. There's always a new story uh, and a new angle. And in this instance, I think it's worthwhile because the other thing that, the, sorry, I know I'm rambling on a little bit now, but but the other thing that's probably worthwhile saying is that no one's saying that he is therefore you know evil, as it were. They're simply saying he was a man of his time, and this this is this is how how and where he got an awful lot of that money from. You know, it, yeah, I, I'm not I'm not sure that. Uh, I'm not sure that I can see much objection personally for this. No, and, and, and I mean, it's worth quoting uh, Dr. Uh, Hartwig Fisher, who's the director of the British Museum currently, mm. um, who said, you know, we've pushed him, Sloan, off his pedestal. Um, now he's, uh, and he's locked in a display, can make, quote, alongside artefacts which ex explain his works in the, quote, exploitative context of the British Empire. Mm. No objective historian now would object to that kind of description i think you know it's about yeah. seeing as you were saying it's about seeing somebody in the round mm. not just as a philanthropist but as somebody whose philanthropy was actually embedded on the um on the forced labor of enslaved people who've been stolen from their homes mm. by you know by a complicated economic process that involved other people of their own culture even sometimes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um but transported by white slave traders across the Atlantic to the colonies in South America, Central America, the Caribbean and North America. And well, you know, we, we, we have to understand that. But there's a, can I just move the discussion on a little bit though? Because there is a very, there's a subtle point Hmm. That, well, um, just just before you come to that, I know what you're about to mention. We could just just add to what you were just saying very quickly. Um, hmm. This also comes in because you were just mentioning how uh, people traded sometimes in their own culture, sometimes from their own continent, this kind of thing. Um, there's also actually a story this month which I'll chuck into the links below. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm doing that. I'm doing it live, as it were. I'll, I'll put <laughs> in there um, where um, there was a, a discussion about how. Um, Archaeology in, I think, think Norway possibly uh, has has shed light on what is the little known slave trade in the Viking era, and the mm. fact that that that, that um, people from the Slavic region were often infamously often infamously for for for. for historians who study the period often traded as slaves in the nordic world uh, it's one of the reasons dublin, why... dublin was famous as an entrepot wasn't it exactly yeah yeah dublin i mean i think in dublin they found chains there that, that were linked with this 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 slave trade um in uh, in saxon um 
uh, riddles I've highlighted in, in a previous video, in a, a book review video. Um, there was a riddle about how leather or, or metal could be used to bind slaves and take take people, I think, what was it, against their will, I think was the, was the phrase, to other places. So, uh, again, just heading off at the past, some criticisms from the innocence, I would say, far-right people. They would say, well, it's just, you know, everyone always had slavery. Yes, everyone always has had slavery, and it's possible for people of the same skin colour to enslave each other. Uh, but in this instance, we're talking about a slave trade that's directly influenced the society in which we now live. The modern Western world benefited directly from the sla from the transatlantic slave trade, and therefore it's our res house, still household names had their origins in that exactly it? yeah, and therefore it's our responsibility and our right as modern humans and historians and 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 thinking people to reassess that. Um, uh, you know, it's much harder for us to have a right. I would I would argue to 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 reassess, for example, ancient. Egyptian slavery, ancient Greek slavery. This is a slightly different thing because we haven't directly benefited from it. So I just thought I'd just mention that in so much as, yes, of course, people can enslave people from the same continent. You know, that happened all the time, but that's not what we're arguing about here. Yeah. yeah. There Sorry. are two final points I wanted to feed into this. New, and of course, I, I agree with you completely mm -hmm. on, on, on that. One point which Moore does make, which I think is a very sharp one, Mm. and one that has to be answered by people like the British Museum. Mm -hmm. um, he compares Fisher's, as he would put it, attack on Sloane's reputation with defending the sponsorship of, the, of exhibitions at the British Museum by, for example, the oil company BP, mm. which has been incredibly controversial. Now, Fisher said in an article in The Telegraph, Quote, it allows visitors to see things we wouldn't otherwise be able to offer. But then Port Moore points out the same could be said with knobs on for a legacy like Sloan's. The mm. British Museum wouldn't be there if it hadn't been for the money that Sloan and the objects that Sloan donated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So why defend Sloan but attack BP? Yeah. Or, or sorry, why, uh, why attack, uh, B, uh, attack Sloan and, 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 defend, and defend BP? BP. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and also, and in that quotes, sense, I suppose, I suppose a direct analogy would be why not have as part of the BP exhibition. In recent years, BP has been involved in, you know, a huge yeah. uh, oil crisis off the att coast of the US. You know. Yes, exactly. Att you know, exactly. Uh, the, the attempting to drill in the whatever sensitive region or whatever, you know, have, have that conversation. You know, has committed, uh, you know, uh, oil products have committed uh, uh, so many billion tons of carbon to. Uh, uh, to, to global warming, mm. um, and, and so you 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 could you could you it's make an the argument, argument. That should, you know it, you, the argument should 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 be had, and maybe you can argue the argument should be had more consistently. Mm. Um, mm. But the other thing about this uh, that I find really interesting and really quite disturbing was, um, and this was broken in a, a very good story um, by. Uh, uh, Graham Dinamaniac in, in, in the Huffington Post, where uh, as a result of the Colston event, um, museums and councils and so all over the country have been assessing what to mm. do with their statues and the legacies of people who had involvement in the trade and enslaved people. Mm -hmm. And one of those organisations um, was what's now called the Museum of the Home, what used to be called the Jeffrey Museum after its founder, another philanthropist called Sir Robert Jeffrey, who was also involved in the trade in slave Africans. Mm -hmm. um, the museum did a consultation and the consultation came down in favour of removing Jeffrey's statue from outside the museum. But the museum board of directors chose not to do that and chose instead to, quote, recontextualise the statue. Mm -hmm. But one of the reasons it turns out they did that and it and the quote is they felt extremely compromised mm. was that they received a letter as it would appear to a number of other museums from the wording this seems to have been something of a round robin um, from the uh, the department for digital culture media and sport the dcms which is basically the government funding body mm -hmm. for our museums where the secretary of state oliver dowden um said that um 
you play a crucial role in conserving our heritage assets, caring for our national collections, and providing access and knowledge to the efforts uh, for culture to uh, for uh, to offer cultural education for all. Mm -hmm. I am aware that the issues of contested heritage provoke strongly held views and that right now these issues will be in the forefront of your minds. I therefore want to share with you the government's position on these issues. <laughs> what do you think is coming? Is this an instruction or is this a sharing of issues as part of a debate? Listen to what he said. The government believes that it is always legitimate to examine and debate British history, but that removing statues, artwork and other historical objects is not the right approach. That sounds like an instruction. Yeah, yeah. Confronting our past may be difficult at times, but as the Prime Minister has stated, he's speaking with the authority of the Prime Minister here, we cannot pretend to have a different history. Historical objects were created by previous generations who often had different perspectives and different understandings of right and wrong. He then added, and this is the stinger, and, no, and, and there isn't a board of directors of a museum in the country that wouldn't understand the meaning behind this. Mm -hmm. As a government-funded organisation, I would expect you to be mindful of the above, above approach, which has been agreed with Historic England. That is basically a threat to their funding. Yeah. Do as we say, or you risk losing funding. Yeah. It, and that is seriously scary. It, it is. But it, what's it, even it, more what's even more scary is the final line. Oh, okay. If mm -hmm. you plan, if you, if you plan to make any statements or actions in relation to this issue please contact the DCMS in advance of doing so. The government was asking to have pre-knowledge of the messaging from independent organisations. Yeah, that's not good. Well, I, I, it, it's, it's not, not good, not but good. it also fundamentally uh, undermines the, the, as I was saying earlier, the role of history and historians. The purpose of this material is to be assessed and reassessed and to be understood in the context of modern modern viewership. It's not to be simply presented as it was presented to, you know, our fathers and our fathers' fathers. And, you know, um, I, I did see Prime Minister Johnson's, I don't like to call him Boris because he's not a cuddly teddy bear. Um, I, 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 I... He's, he's prime, the Prime Minister or Boris, or Boris Johnson. Uh, uh, um, that's the most fat informal I'll get, Boris Johnson. Boris prime Johnson. Minister Boris Johnson. Yeah. Prime um, Minister. Sorry, Alexander Boris de Johnson, actually, to give him his full type, full name. Yes, precisely, yes, yes. <laughs> um, but I did see uh, his statement on this. And it is, uh, for someone who studied classics at Oxford, for someone who understands the role of history and histories, in framing modern life uh, or, or contemporaneous life in that instance in the classical world uh, his response was extremely tone deaf and more and essentially serving a modern political goal uh, that is to say uh, playing to the base as it were um, it wasn't objective and it wasn't even particularly responsible i would say from from a leader of our country it wasn't trying to walk a line it was laying well, down the line. Absolutely. Well, well, don't forget, this is a person who went on the record in a newspaper article uh, uh, saying that uh, women who wear certain kinds of Islamic traditional dress from certain parts of the Islamic world look like letterboxes and bank robbers. Yeah. This is not somebody who... who the, the nuances of arguments about um, racism and, and so are, are um, perhaps lost on Alexander Boris the Fethel Johnson. Yeah. Or is they not? they actually no. They're not lost. He's too bright for that. He knows exactly what he's doing, but it ain't having a, a nuanced debate about the issues. No, no. I would argue. Mm. So um, there we are, and uh, and I suppose. I suppose one question would be what comes next and also the, the the question this is a question that i think is on the the tip of the tongue for many people who are concerned about this sort of reassessment um is where does it end where does it stop you know is there actually an end point to this sort of thing um and uh are we essentially saying well actually um there isn't an end point you know history will continue to be reassessed because that's what what people do at any given point which is the present <laughs> we're always looking back and going what happened <laughs> like... there look there, there is the i think if you want some perspective on this and yeah i think you, uh, you you go to alan bennett's the history boys where there's the line about history is just one fucking thing after another <laughs> yes yeah 
I agree. And, 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 and so on until the end of time. 